Welcome to another video. Let's solve this sixth degree polynomial equation. Before we start, I just want to highlight something about all equations. Remember, I like referring to the fundamental theorem of algebra because if a polynomial is of sixth degree, it must have six roots, right? Okay, so this polynomial equation will definitely have six solutions. Now, if some of them may just be uh, a multiplicity of more than one, sometimes the answers you get are not real, they are imaginary. So for this video, we're just going to focus on the real and not the complex solutions. However, every time you get a complex solution to a polynomial, it doesn't come alone. All complex solutions will always come in pairs. So it is either you have all of them because you must have six. It's either all six of them are complex or four of them are complex or two of them are complex or zero of them are complex, but you cannot have an odd number of complex. And if it is not complex, it is real. So if the problem says we should find all real solutions, it means you, you're, you have to get two real solutions or four real solutions or six real solutions or zero real solutions. Okay, let's get into it. Obviously, this problem was designed in such a way that the degree of this is twice the degree of this, and that's when you start thinking of a quadratic, because that's what a quadratic um, equation would look like. So let's start and say that we have n to the sixth minus n cubed minus two will be equal to zero. And then we say let, let's do y, let y be equal to this, which is the lower degree, um, n cubed. That means this will be y squared. So we have y squared minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. And if we factor this, we're going to end up with y minus 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 0. Right? So it means that y minus 2 equals 0 or y plus 1 equals 0, giving us two possible solutions y is equal to 2 or y equals negative 1. So what do we do with this? Remember we made the substitution that y equals n cubed and that's where the beauty of this whole thing shows up because we don't know now how many, we only got two solutions but since y equals n cubed we know that n cubed will be equal to 2 which means n cubed minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, how many solutions does this have? Because remember, we're trying to solve for n. This must have three solutions. Yeah, it doesn't look like it does, but it has three solutions, actually. So, what do we do? Well, anytime you have a cubic equation, try, if it looks like this especially, you cannot factor, try to write this as a difference of two cubes. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write this as n cubed minus, I'm going to write this as a cube, which is going to be, but what can I cube to give me two? Well, it's going to be the cube root, or two raised to the power one third cubed. This takes this out and you still have this, but now I have a difference of two cubes. And what does this tell me? Let's divide this in two. If I have to solve for this, factoring, remember this factoring, that a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. This is what we're gonna use. Okay, the formula for difference of two cubes. It's important that as a math student, you don't forget this. So here we go. We're going to use it here. So this cubed minus this cubed is going to be equal to this minus this. That is n minus 2 to the one third multiplied by a squared, which is n squared plus 
AB, which is N times this, which is 2 to the 1 third N, plus the square of this. If you square 2 to the 1 third, it gives you 2 to the 2 thirds. And you have 0 on this side. Right? Okay, so it means this is equal to 0, or this equals 0. So we have two solutions. And if you make this equal to 0, you can clearly see that it means N will be equal to 2 to the 1 third. So we have n equals 2 to the 1 third, or this n squared plus 2 to the 1 third n plus 2 to the 2 thirds equals 0. Let's get rid of this. Clearly, this is a real solution. We just need to investigate if we can get anything real from this one. Okay, how do you know whether the solution to a quadratic is real or not? Remember, it is only real if b squared is greater than or equal to 4ac. But if b squared is less than 4ac, you're going to get an imaginary root, which is going to make your answer complex. So let's just check what b is. So uh, check. So we're going to check for b squared. Well, b squared, this is our b. What is the square of this? It's going to be 2 to the 2 thirds. Okay, let's check 4ac. 4 times a times c will be 4 times 1 times this. 4 times this times this is going to be, look, it's going to be 4 times 1 times 2 to the 2 thirds. But 4 itself can be written as 2 squared. Let's just remove this one. It's a distraction. So it becomes 2 squared. What is 2 squared times 2 to the 2 thirds? It is 2 to the 2 plus 2 thirds will be 8 thirds. So what we have for AC is actually 2 to the 8 thirds. So which is bigger? Is it B squared or 4 AC? Clearly 4 AC is bigger than B squared. So since B squared is less than 4 AC, this solution cannot be real. There are no real roots. So this is the only real root we can get here. We've got one option here. Let's move on. So we're done with this one. Let's go to this one. Similarly, so we have n cubed equals negative 1. That means that n cubed plus 1 equals 0. There is a formula for the sum of cubes, which is very similar to what I used here. It's just that this will have a plus and this would be a minus. That's the only difference. So it's going to be, we can write this, this implies that n cubed plus 1 cubed equals 0. So we can, <laughs> come on, n plus 1 multiplied by, we apply the rule, it's going to be the square of the first, n squared, minus the product of the two, which is n, and then we're going to have plus 1 squared, which is 1, equals 0. So that's how to factor this. This is what it factors into, using the same um, sum of two cubes formula. So here, we're going to have n plus 1 equals 0, or n squared minus n plus 1 equals 0. So what do we have? Well, clearly n equals minus 1 is a solution. n equals minus 1, and this is real. We got another real one. So we got one real one. We got another real one. Okay, let's go here. Let's check to see if we're going to get a real solution to this. Remember, the check is always b squared and 4ac. So check. Okay, we're checking this one. Um, what is b squared? b squared is minus 1 squared, which is 1. What is 4ac? Uh, let's put 4ac here. 4ac equals... Let me rewrite this as minus 1 squared, which is 1. And 4ac is going to be 4 times a is 1. And what is c? C is 1. Oh, it gives us 4. So as you can see, again, B squared is less than 4AC. 1 is less than 4. So if you solve this using the quadratic formula, 
you will not get a real answer. Oh, that's sad. It's going to be um, complex. And therefore, the only two solutions that we can get that are real are these. And if you use the quadratic formula, you'll be able to get the imaginary roots of these quadratic equations. And you're going to get two from here, two from here. So the total number, like I said at the beginning, is six. Two real and four complex. Okay, so real, therefore, n equals minus one and... Um, the set of minus one and two to the one third. Ah, those are the real solutions. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.